changed her style a little. One of the reasons, you don't mind if I do this now, because I think it's Steve is going to You note all this, that she's left a lot of white, unlike a lot of the rest of her paintings. And part of the reason she's not getting older, we won't say that, but as she gets more mature, yeah. <laughs> we take off sort of an easier <laughs> that you can still do. And so she had a wonderful artist named Clyde Smith from Connecticut was visiting in my studio, a portrait artist. And I could tell she liked him a lot and respected his opinion. And so he, she said, she let him see one of our Christ churches, similar to this. And he said, Mildred, stop. You're finished now. Yeah. So from then on, she, uh, there's not many in here now, but this one is that way and there might be one other one where she leaves, you know, but she, she just, she, it's sort of contemporary looking, really. I like this song. She's, she's done a lot of them. Well, thank you for letting me sit there. You're welcome, dear. This is another view of um, Monet's. I like to put my hands on. Another, another thing about canvas that she's always told me is that she loves the feel of canvas. There's something about the yes, that responds where a boy just comes back to speech and there's an emotional thing. Uh, I have been painting on uh, pulp paper from the Georgia Pacific Company, which has a branch in London, Georgia. And when they heard that I was painting, doing oil painting on um, pulp, which is their basis of many things, you know, that they that they don't produce, but it's the, the basis of what goes to do all kinds of things. They had me to come down to um, to um, the mill and go through the the paper mill, which I was delighted to do because um, uh, I wondered why. I had never done that before, and I, I did so much with oil paper, with drop. So, if you have, are you from any of you familiar with pulp paper? We have one in Rome. Huh? We have a meal in Rome. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Well, they can tour it if they want. I went went down to um, went down went through there. It was wonderful to see the, the logs go in one end and come in different stages chips and then be fed into something else and and come down in a river of like white like milk and that then was another process and it was rolled up into into pulp paper and um, I had to have a it's about a half a mile walk to go through the plant. I had to have a guard with me I had lights uh, support of what in case something happened, couldn't breathe or something. Great, great experience. So then um, the uh, <clears throat> officials asked me if I would do a painting, an oil painting on this pulp paper. I said, of course. And um, I did a lot of experimenting, but it, simply, it was simply a matter of sealing the porous quality of the pulp. It, it was it takes a while, you know, I used all kinds of things to see it. And so I think I brought one picture up there, print of it. I did one large one for them of the uh, Coast Guard station. Uh, there again, I'm um, always uh, interested and totally committed to as fast as I possibly can do to preserve those things that are, that People are looking at just as how many houses can I get on this piece of land? We'll tear that old thing down. And that's what we have uh, in all, um, all the islands. And I think one of the things, knowing well as I do, but from a, an art gallery point of view also, and uh, uh, her background is she's as much of a historian and writer as she is a painter. The three things come together art, beauty, and history. Uh, that's that's equally important to her. It shows up in her art, I think, with great feeling that she preserves a lot of the well, landmarks. I, I love old things. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, I love old pieces of furniture. I love, oh, I also love young, young people too. That's something that Mildred and I 
do we did one uh, session uh, two or three years ago at the summer bill we spoke to to uh, children in the second and third um, grades uh, a big small a big percentage of know anything about the coast of the coast of Georgia and we talked with uh, our governor once about it and he said well why don't you go and tell these children in some uh, area that probably have never seen the ocean so some of them was the place we knew and then we went to Albany last year we'll probably go to two more this year I love second and third grade children and I feel very sorry for them now because they're learning to be old people before they really, um, they're learning to be, do things by computer before they've really grown up to me and to see their faces when they see me standing around holding a live crab and, and the claws going this way and their eyes are this big. <laughs> then I put it on the floor and they run and then I show them yeah. to step on it and, we carry the shrimp, we carry the culture so of the coast. And there's an art in that, really, you know. Mm -hmm. Art takes so many different forms, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And I was just thinking either, even what you wear, is, your body's a piece of artwork, really, when you think of it. What you put on, how you present yourself, it doesn't have to be the most, the fanciest thing, but it's, it is an art form. Yeah, I'm really very concerned about how I present myself. <laughs> <laughs> My hair today is done by my dog. <laughs> you did a good job. All right, since you've said, said this, I'll have to tell them one story. I'm going to tell you that you've got a good sense of humor. When we made this trip, and so do I, you have to have. <laughs> but we made a wonderful trip together, and uh, she said, finally, she said, I can see the only way to, for this trip to work out with the two of us sharing a room the whole time and being so close to each other is to let you make all the plans and have your own way. So, <laughs> <laughs> always go into the motel room and say, which room do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we, we made two trips recently when the hurricane Bertha was coming to us and another one. And, uh, I don't ever want to be in a hurricane. Well, Mother leaves three days before the voluntary evacuation starts. We have to leave, so we have a. I have a routine now. It's easier for me to, you know, to go on an evacuation. We make a, we make a little call. We make a little trip away from home. You know, it's nice. We meet a lot of people that are fleeing also from Savannah and Hilton Head and all that. Uh, one of the things, uh, I was something interesting happened to me yesterday here. I saw Romulus and Remus in front of your thing, and I lived in Italy, and the people I was with uh, pointed out, and I stopped and got out to read the inscription and all for Mussolini, and that was 1928. That was before he was so involved with Hitler, which prompted me to think about the time we saw Hitler's watercolors in Washington, D.C. Hitler did beautiful watercolors. I have two of them reproduced right. by a friend of mine who worked at the Pentagon and carried me. I was having a show with, uh, in the um, Congressional Hall with uh, Stuckey, Congressman Stuckey. <coughs> and uh, she said, wouldn't you like to see uh, Hitler's watercolors? And I said, I had no idea he was anything but a house painter, you know? But we went down into the bowels of the Pentagon, which was an experience for I will never forget. And uh, they had guards outside. Guards outside. Guards outside. Mm -hmm. Guarding all of the, I didn't know, I really never knew um, where all the artwork in the world that you read and hear about was confiscated in different wars. But if it's in this country, it's in the Pentagon. And Hitler and Mussolini's cape was there. And that's what reminded me, that's why I started the story, was just that. Well, this yeah. friend had these, and these were beautiful watercolors, and I have them in black and white. One is a house singing, the railroad tracks, and the other one is a, a, a tunnel. Tunnel was a tunnel with the train. But anyhow, why I was bringing this whole thing up, it's interesting what happened, because I had a chance to show the gallery, and it it's very unpopular. And I talked to a man in Washington, D.C., who owned the gallery, and he said, I could have too, but he said, 
I think would have just a very unpopular thing still to show. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That he was he was a very fine watercolor painter, and they say he was so frustrated he was not accepted in art school if he tried to get in. I mean, people speculate to say That's what would have happened if he had ever if he'd been accepted. You know, they wish that he had been accepted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I want to so. I want to commend the student body here who helps. Mill and uh, arrange this exhibit. Uh, mm -hmm. I see some of them over here now. Yes, yeah. 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 they're here. They're here. And no. you, you all did this. Huh? Did the swing. Oh. That's uh, John's story. And Martha. Where's Martha? Martha's here. Martha's, 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 Martha's just getting the telephone call. <laughs> but what I wanted, the other thing, um, uh, Steve and Brian wanted me to sort of mention, I was telling them about how I felt about arranging the dolls and all, because it's an art form in arranging it. And they were so happy that you all helped me. And we were just talking about what makes people want to help, you know, put on something and all. And I think it's an energy that comes together and either we like each other's personality or something happens that we're all involved and it's very important. It looks like it might not be in a show, but you have to care about every little thing and fixing this the way you did and cared about it really is bringing the show together. You did this uh -huh. And so uh, that when you if you get into the gallery business or whatever it is in your art, every little detail it seems like it's we're nitpicking, but you're not. And the fact that you showed all your creative talent, I've never done it like this. Mm -hmm. and that's what we have needed to do. You really help bring it to life. We got tickled with Jason and the boys too. They got into it. He he wanted to take a bite out of the cookie to make it look like he was really eating. He did. Cookie. I thought that was precious. <laughs> And nobody noticed I put a telephone on. I did. <laughs> you were good. Uh, I would like to say that there are no shortcuts in life to me in achieving what you want to do, whether it's to be an artist or writer. I am very glad, and this is hard to say, that I was, came up in the era that I did in which we weren't pushed to do anything. We weren't, we didn't have to hurry. I came up in an era of, of course, I wish I had about 50 more years, but I'm sure You're I know. <laughs> but what I'd like to say to you that it takes time. Focus on what, and take the time to do it. You who are in your teens and early years now, um, um, bombarded on every side with um, uh, what can you do so we fast everything fast food fast shortcuts uh, computer, computer everything we did things uh, or exposed to doing things um, both uh, stolidly and with no person perseveration perseverance I hope I've gotten my point across. You're doing fine. Don't be in a hurry to become the greatest that you want to be before anybody else. You know when you've achieved it if you have, you know, gone at it right. Um, and you'll have it inside yeah. yourself. You'll know. I know I've had people, and you have too, that try to say, "Well, why are you taking so long to? You could just do it this way, but that would just be covering up and doing it, but it would not last." But that's what you have to, when you know it yourself, when you've done it well and you you can talk about it. And that's another thing about art, practicing writing and all that is important because you need to learn to write about your art. You know, another thing, Mildred, that you and I have always said when, after we have a show, many people say, well, say, um, well, how, how was it? How much money did you oh, make? Oh, yes. How much and this is well, that something tell I hate to hear, but that's so rude. not success, see. Mm -hmm. Success is, did you do a good job? Did people like it? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and that's putting you very well. And that you like it, too. That's right. Do you students have any questions? Yes. Well, I wanted to ask you, what is it particularly that you liked about Bob? when you were collecting the work, or what just sparked your interest? For me? 
Well, okay, thank you. I was supposed to have gone into that, and I didn't. I was trying to think about Mother doing some of the things here, and I, I lost my train of thought a little bit. But what's, what spurred me on was study. I studied it, I liked it from the beginning, and then I delved more into it. And I have, a, a, I'm fascinated with Andre Derrick and have a small painting of his, not valuable like the faux period, but because I was able to get that from a woman that I liked a lot in Auntie France, she took me by the hand and showed me a lot. So I had a mentor that sort of nourished that. And from then on, that was about 25 years ago, from then on, I just couldn't get enough books and all of that. And then I, I was fortunate to have a my late husband indulged me in France to encourage me to learn about this, and we went to every place he painted and shot to every bridge. That put me in touch with all the foes, with me and every one of them. So, uh, in a non-scholarly way, I became an expert on it. And then one thing happened recently that made me feel good. I was at a bank in New York, and they had to auction an Andre Darren painting off, this banker did it, and casually, not thinking anybody from Georgia could be any help, he said, we can't get it um, authenticated. And I said, well, he said, there's one person in Paris. And I said, I'm, I said, Mr. Kellerman. And he said, how do you know? I said, I know him. And so I was able to introduce them to the aunt of Darren, and they have already seen her, and are probably going to be able to auction this painting. The one thing I didn't do was say, give me a piece of the action. <laughs> but that's not in my nature. So anyhow. That's, you become, for many reasons, you, it becomes passionate really with you that it's like uh, anything that you become interested in, you study more, don't you think? Sure. And you, you want to learn about it. And this school of Xenia came after that, and so I did the same way in it. I found every, every artist in that school of Xenia. I consider photography a, a true art. Uh, I've shot pictures around the world, traveled many places, and until the last uh, 15, 20 years, paid not much attention to it, because I just snapped as I went along, you know, and, and, uh, but more and more, um, I feel like um, in, uh, in painting, I can't beat God in painting the world. I can't possibly. Can do something creative that is me. But look, with, with a camera, you can prove you didn't, you, you didn't used to feel that way. No. I don't think either of us did about I photography. I really feel I'm like you more than it. Except it as an art. I put it on more with pedestal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's because this, you're getting good at it, too. Well, you this know. is my. Well, I do it effort, effortlessly, I will say. Uh, that happened to be my favorite spot growing up, and uh, my father would throw a shrimp net the same place as on St. Simon's. That's down about two miles from the Red Barn, which if you've been there, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. And I remember threw a net the same way. When I saw that boy and had no idea who he was, I just snapped my little camera. When I had it developed, I looked at it and I said, to myself, this is a piece of art. Oh, let me tell you something funny about this. I haven't even mentioned it to you, but we had this large painting in the gallery. Of, I mean, the large photograph, bigger than this, framed beautifully of mothers. And it was for sale, and a beautiful blonde woman came in, and she said, uh, I'd like to buy this. She said, I know who this person is. She said, he's my boyfriend. And I said, fine. So we gift wrapped it, and uh, she gave it to him evidently. We didn't know. We don't know this man. I don't know him. But uh, he's got something because three weeks later, another woman came in, blonde. <laughs> we had another, you know, another picture. We had another one. Because it doesn't say anything that we can't have more than one. And so the lady I have that works with me doesn't have as much good a sense. She has a good sense of humor, but she has what I call a blank sort of poker face. And so she, I saw her face, though, when this lady came in and she said she wanted to buy this picture that she knew this man. And so 
she said to me, she said, what should we do? I said, don't do a thing. I said, that's none of our fair. So he's got lots of these pictures. He had a lot of girls there. But I thought it was interesting. We're waiting now this Christmas to see if anybody else is coming. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a historic spot. It meant a lot to me. Growing up, learning to throw a shrimp net by my father and then uh, seeing my husband do the same thing when we'd be in a rowboat. And then uh, we always carried out three children with fishing and everything. I don't remember seeing Mildred actually throw the net. He might have, <laughs> he might have, he might have pulled it in and somebody threw it. Yeah, everybody is the one on house. That's Cannon's point. Callan's Point. The same. No. John no, this is Hope. Yeah, that's Callan's Point Plantation. Well, Callan's Point belonged to, to John Cooper also. Oh, One thing in conclusion, uh, and then we'd love to have y'all ask some questions if you'd like to, but Mom and I both feel that there's not really any bad art. I don't like it when people say, oh, that's not good. How do they know it's not good? It's from the eye of the book, to me. You can find something good in everybody's art. Look for it. Now, I was, uh, I never I did have any art lessons in college, in college, a few, but mechanical drawing in Florida State University. But um, um, in traveling in the last 50, 50, 55, 60 years, um, in many parts of the world, I have, have avail myself of every opportunity to paint in any country that I was in. Uh, I'd, before I'd plan a trip to go, generally with the travel agency, I'd say, where can I paint up? I was on a ship, you know, there's teachers on a ship. So that has been a great thing to me. I realized uh, I was able to, everybody can't do that, and I didn't do it until late, late in life. You said you rolled up the canvases that took them that way. You rolled mm -hmm. the canvases to cut little ones. Cut little ones. You rolled the samples. Uh -huh. samples. And you got to get a bigger one when you got home. Um, is that your start and you did a bigger one from that when you got home? Oh yeah, I did always did the little one and do the big one from it. And generally I would cut it so it, if the, I had the small one it would have enough left to do it put it on a stretcher. Yeah. Oh, so you get that. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the paper that's made by the Georgia Pacific, the pulp paper, uh, try it sometimes, um, especially with a 6 b pencil. Those beautiful drawings. And you can also very definitely use a drawing, uh, do a drawing on, a, on that pulp paper. And then just, uh, I call it a, a whisk of, of watercolor. But it's, it's, it's absorbent, you know. Because mm -hmm. paper, you know, this pulp paper goes to make every, every paper product that, that, uh, that exists. You're lucky to have a meal here. Well, ours is craft paper. It's a little huh? bit, ours is craft paper, like paper bags. It's not white. It's brown. It's yeah, well, well, that's not. Pulp paper is the, it's like the basis of paper, too. Mm -hmm. The finished product is brown, isn't it? Well, is it, I don't know. Yeah. Georgia yeah. Pacific does not make any finished product. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. These oh. are made into boxes. Yeah. These are made into boxes. Well, one thing I was reading in the paper about his two art teacher, art professors here is that's wonderful that they're hands-on. They both are artists that you all, I think that's wonderful because sometimes they're not hands-on artists in the school. I, I think that's a wonderful sculpture recall. in the painting. Was that an art department here 73 years ago? I don't remember. I wasn't here, I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, we've I enjoyed really being with you all. Oh, we go now. We just have to hear what it was like 73 years ago. <laughs> what was it like? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I want to hear that little thing about going downtown and the river was frozen. Oh, uh -oh. Yeah, please frozen tell rubble. them that. They've heard about I'm not going to tell the story. Oh! Frozen oh. rubble. Oh. Fred, you'll know. Well, you've already heard it. No, no. no. Oh, you want me to tell it quick before you? You might tell it quick. Okay, well, you tell it quick then. Uh, there was not very much to do for entertainment, uh, except we had a 
dance each weekend where we danced with girls. <laughs> and that's all the way we had to dress up for. But when it was a, there was a cold, very cold day, uh, and um, somebody dared anybody that would to walk across the lake. Who's the river? Who's the river? No, wasn't the river. Where the lake is, it's still a lake here. Uh -uh. Huh? It's no, a river. You're the river. Who's the river downtown? The river. No, this was the show. It was the lake up there on the. Oh, I don't know that. Somewhere here. <laughs> Anyhow, there was a sign saying no. Okay. Uh, I, been, I was already restricted so that I had no <laughs> chance of going anywhere. Anyhow, until Christmas came. So I did walk across there and fell in the um, other side. The president was there. President Blocker was the. Uh -huh. Baptist preacher standing up on in his long black coat on, putting in his thumbs up. Well, he said, I'll see you in my office. And he, I went in, and it was a shipping offense. It was a sign there that said, don't do it, don't do it. I could hear, my, and he said, I'm calling your father now. And um, he will have to come and take you home. And um, I sat there in mobile, I imagine. And, I could hear my father say, um, how far is it across the lake? Like a block. And he said, so many feet, you know, and David said, has anybody ever done it before? And the doctor blocker said no, and David said, by George, she's hung up a hook. Thank you for making a telephone. Yeah. <laughs> Now we see why you only went one year. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love. Uh, Charlotte gave me. I say it again. The perseverance that I still have in pursuing what I do, and it, it gave me appreciation of, of, of music, which was really conservatory music at that time, you know, and, and uh, a drama. I, I remember taking elocution. We call the speech drama, we call it eloquent, learning how to speak. And uh, I'm indebted to show the fun, so the love humanities, yeah. too. All the humanities. Thank you all again for coming and being so attentive. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'd like to tell you a little about the School of Zenia that we have hanging in the show at uh, Shorter College. The Zenias are an unusual name for an uh, art movement, but it came about by a group of artists in the 1920s formed the school in Lyon, France. They named it for the Zenia because the Zenia has such sharp, clear defined petals and bright, vivid colors, which the uh, school of Zenias, all of the artists painted that way in these bright colors. This is by Saint Jean, it's a pastel. He always did a, a preliminary sketch. The next painting here is a large one of his that he did. And uh, note all the vivid, bright colors. Now, Saint Jean is the nephew of the next painting we're going to see by Didier, who was more or less the founder of the School of Zenia. He's deceased now, but his work is in the Musée de Beaux Arts in Lyon, and is, he's a well-respected Lyonnaise artist. And as we go to the other, start with the small oil on paper paintings. These I collected over a period of 20 years. 